We're looking at life history traits today, something called R selection versus K selection. And the examples of this, the maybe extreme examples would be a whale compared to um, a mosquito and with the mouse being somewhere in the middle. So this, with this, we're looking at how long it takes to grow up and how many babies you make um, once you are grown up. So if you look at a typical mosquito, it might take about 10 days for a mom to grow up and lay 100 to 200 eggs. And those eggs aren't cared for at all. They're just laid in the water and uh, mom takes off. And the opposite extreme might be a whale. So it might take six to 12 years for a whale to grow up, depending on the species. And um, each mom is gonna have one baby maybe every two or three years. And she puts a whole lot of work into that baby. She protects the baby from predators. And, um, and she's also pregnant for quite a long time. These life history traits um, really influence um, the gestation time and how much energy is, um, is put into caring for the young. And here's one species of um, kestrel, it's a type of bird. And these are just one species of bird that um, can either have a normal brood size or enlarged or reduced. And so we're not even looking at the difference between mosquitoes and whales for this one. We're looking at a single species. And so here would be survival of mom and dad with a normal brood size. So that means if they lay the regular number of eggs, this is their survival. So, you know, roughly 60% of the parents survive um, the winter if they have normal, um, a normal number of eggs that they lay. If they, if they lay a whole lot of eggs, notice how especially dad's um, survival decreases. And so that's probably because he's putting so much energy into raising those babies, it's at the expense of his health. And so his health is um, not quite as good and he's less likely to survive. On the other hand, if the brood population is small, he's very likely to survive because he didn't put quite so much energy into taking care of the babies. We can see these in plants as well as animals. So um, some plants put a lot of energy into their seeds and they protect them, whereas others you know, have these have a, a whole bunch, like a dandelion will have a whole bunch of seeds and they don't have a whole lot of energy given to each seed, whereas these Brazil nuts um, have a lot of energy in each seed and with fewer seeds. Okay, so what you really need to know about this is case selection versus R selection. And case selection should sound a whole lot like something you know already, which is carrying capacity. And so K is your carrying capacity. If you forget that, it's right on your cheat sheet. So I'm going to show you that cheat sheet. Oops. Um, let's take a look at the cheat sheet. So here's your cheat sheet, and you'll get to know pretty much all of the math on this by the end of the year. But right now we're taking a look. I don't know can't use this right now, but anyway, we're taking a look right at this top part. And so here's the exponential growth we talked about last time, and here's the logistic growth we talked about last time. K is carrying capacity, and R is the, um, the growth rate of the population. So we'll be looking at K versus R, and this K selection has to do with carrying capacity, whereas um, R selection um, has to do with maximum growth. So let's take a look at how that works. So K selection is density dependent selection. So what that means is the populations that are K selecting species tend to have their um, populations generally around here at carrying capacity. So these are organisms that don't have a gazillion babies. They have few babies and they put a lot of work into those babies. So they, they put a lot of energy into those babies. So you're going to see a rhinoceros here, um, elephants here, anyone who has maybe one baby a year, two babies a year, and they, they put a lot of effort there. Our selection is density independent. So that means we're working down here. So these populations tend to go up and down and up and down. So they never quite reach carrying capacity because maybe they'll lay a thousand eggs, but let's say it's a mosquito and it's laying a thousand. Well, let's say each mosquito is laying a hundred eggs. So they haven't reached carrying capacity yet, but then there's um, a drought and most of those babies die and you have very few babies again. But then once it's uh, rainy again, then they have a whole bunch of eggs that they lay and they get a huge population again, but then it gets dry and they all die. So 
our selecting organisms tend to work here um, where they haven't reached carrying capacity yet and their populations go up and down based on environmental factors more than other like other mosquitoes um, compete out competing them whereas the ones up here at case selecting their populations tend to not fluctuate wildly and so what limits them really is competition from other organisms of their species or other organisms in general or predators or prey but they don't have some it, it's usually a, a density dependent thing so it's not like the weather that kills them all off um, it's some kind of density dependent factor like predators prey or competition so case selecting organisms are found in very stable environments um, typically so you tend to keep about you know whatever number of elephants in a certain um, forest and those numbers stay pretty stable whereas our selection would be mosquitoes and i can tell you um, outside we have very very few mosquitoes in the winter and we have tons of mosquitoes when it's rainy and then when it gets drier we don't have quite so many so that would be an unstable environment and so our selecting again down here where they don't quite reach carrying capacity but they tend to go up and down and up and down and then k selecting k means carrying capacity and so they tend to be up here in more stable environments and then one thing to remember about these is that these are really um, oversimplifications and they they do help us to understand different methods that um or different evolutionary um, traits that different species have so the difference between whales versus mosquitoes but they are they do remember that they are an oversimplification